Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the podcast. This is podcast episode number 155. I'm going to talk to you today about three things that I didn't know but wish I knew before I started writing a book. So as you may know, um, my book, Fear is Not the Boss of You, is available for pre-orders right now on Amazon. And um, the book writing, launching, birthing process. It's just so much different than what I thought it was going to be. And I know that we have a lot of um, women in particular who are in my audience who feel like they maybe have a book in them. And I think that um, this will be good information for you. Do any of you ever have like, do any of you ever have kids? Okay. Did any of you ever go through childbirth and you thought to yourself, okay, they told me this, like they told me that I was going to feel like this in childbirth, but no one ever told me X, Y, Z. Well, I want to be the girl that comes alongside you and I want to tell you X, Y, Z so that you're like, oh, okay. Now I kind of get some of the stuff that's involved. So, and maybe it's just me that felt like I didn't know all the things before going into childbirth. But, um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to tell you three things that I had no idea about when it came to writing a book. So real quick, first, we're going to give a shout out to someone named Bridget who owns a boutique called Hello Fancy Boutique. And Bridget was kind enough to write a review on what I believe used to be called iTunes and is now called Apple Podcast. And my whole team yells at me for not knowing the difference. And I'm like, look, I can, I can only keep so many things straight. So there it is. But here's what she said. She said, hi, my name's Bridget and I own a woman's clothing boutique called Hello Fancy Boutique. Recently, after a good month of letting fear control me, I prayed for direction and to be free from fear and bam, Jennifer's 40 day of prayer series popped into my Facebook feed. Literally her video just started to play. Um, I feel like the Lord is totally using her to build his kingdom. Thank you, Jennifer, for being a vessel to strengthen my relationship with the Lord first. And in addition, learning some kick booty tips about running a successful business. And so Bridget, I just, um, thank you for that review. I appreciate that. I actually say that about fear is not the boss of you. I'm like, I hope that it like blesses your heart, but I hope it also like kicks you in the booty at the same time because, um, because it's great to just feel like blessed and, and precious, but I really want to see women like making a difference and actually doing something with the content um, that I give them. So that blesses me. Thank you. And I just pray a blessing on your Hello Fancy Boutique. I pray that um, God would just open doors for you that previously maybe have been shut. I pray um, more than enough. I pray for multiple locations and I pray that this business would uh, be something that is a blessing to your family for generations to come in Jesus name. So, um, and if you... Are listening right now and you own a business, would you go over and leave us a podcast review? The reviews actually really matter. It's like one of the ways that um, you get like ranked in terms of where your podcast falls on different lists. And we fell to, fell to, we rose to, I believe we were number nine for all entrepreneurial podcasts um, for just a little while, a couple of weeks ago. And that's an amazing thing to see happen. And part of that comes from you guys like leaving reviews. So half of it's how many people subscribe, another half of it's how many people listen, and then it's also how many people are leaving um, reviews. So thank you for that. All right, let's talk about Fear's Not the Boss of You and um, the fact that it'll be out in April. But I want to give you just the tiniest bit of little history here on how the book came about, because I think that this will be relevant to people who are listening. So um, I can remember, you know how like when you're in grade school and people are like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I can remember my mother was a nurse. And so I felt like what I should say was a nurse, but I can only remember ever giving two answers. And one was that I wanted to write children's books. And that two, I wanted to be like a therapist or a counselor. Those are the only things that I can ever remember. And it's funny that I didn't write a children's book. I mean, maybe that's coming, but I do have a book coming out. And I feel like part of what I get to do is, you know, teach and counsel women in terms of business and life and faith. And so it's kind of fun to see that actually come to fruition. But um, I can remember sitting with a business coach probably a good six or seven years ago and her asking me about some of my aspirations, some of my goals, like what are some things that you really want to see happen in your business? And I can remember saying, I want to have a book. And then I didn't like just stop there. Because by the way, that's a complete sentence. And this is going to minister to someone's heart. I could have just stopped there. <clears throat> I want a book. Like, and be done with it. But instead, I found myself saying, I want a book because da 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 And I started, I remember going into this like explanation of, I really want a book. Like, I think it would be, you know, really good. And I think blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, I stopped and I remember, like, I don't even remember the excuses that I was coming up with, but I stopped. I remember that conversation so clearly. God stopped me in my tracks. And I remember looking at her and I said, I just want a book. 
and feeling like I didn't need to explain it away. And I hope that that touches somebody who's listening today because it's interesting. Like I felt like I needed to say, I want a book because it'd be great for business or I want a book because, uh, you know, I don't know. I was searching for like some reason or excuse that sounded really admirable. You know what I mean? And the truth was, I just wanted a book because I wanted a book. And I can remember going into Barnes and Noble and I've got pictures on my phone of like the DIY decorating section of Barnes and Noble and taking a picture of that and and putting it on my dream board and being like, this is where I want to have my book one day. I can, if I can go downstairs right now and pull out a dream board of mine for several years ago, when I was aware of like a publishing house that I thought at the time I wanted to work with and saying, this is a publishing house I want to work with. Um, in the last, couple of years, I can remember going into Target and taking pictures of different sections of Target and being like, this is where I actually like want my book to sit. Now, some people would call that, you know, calling your shot is what, you know, a lot of people say. Um, I call it just giving God the desires of my heart and just handing it over to him being like, or this is what would be really cool for me. Um, but you know, what's best for me and my family and your kingdom. So you do with that what you want. So I have all of those pictures still on my phone, pictures of Barnes and Noble, picture of Target. I have a picture of the Havali Lobbly as Ava baby always called it. Um, they have a very small book section. It's usually just like one little station thing at the front near the checkout counter. If you want to get really specific, it's always near the, um, the one lane where they have for returns and exchanges at Hobby Lobby. And so I have a picture of that. Like I know where I want my book to go. And it was, but it was so interesting when my coach was like, um, so, you know, give me a goal. And I was like, I want a book because yada, yada, yada. And then finally I was like, you know what? I don't have to explain this away. I just want a book. I think as a way to almost um, prove something to myself and to feel like I'm leaving something that's lasting, um, for people also. And so four or five years ago, I decided, okay, you know what, baby, it's time. (laughs) It is time. At that point, I had probably been blogging for a good seven or eight years. And many of you, um, you'll remember me from my blogging days at the Magic Brush. And so that was when I used to blog very frequently, every single week about something that was going on in our painting business, the Magic Brush. Or, you know, a a long time ago, blogs were kind of used almost as like an online diary. And if you've been um, in the internet space for a while, you'll remember that when we used like blogging as like a diary. So you can still go back and find like tons of articles I wrote years ago when we were knee deep in the adoption process. You can read parenting things from me. There, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot that came out of my brain during that time. But so four or five years ago, I thought to myself, okay, it's time. It's time to actually do a book. And I've been blogging for a long time at this point. So someone suggested to me, well, Jen, why don't you just take a lot of your blog posts that are like home decor and decorating. And why don't you just compile them into a book and that'll be your book. And in my head, I was like, yeah, baby. I mean, that sounds like way easier than starting from scratch. Right? So I can remember Jason putting me up. Jason's Mr. Magic, my husband, not the stripper, Mr. Magic, but like my husband, Mr. Magic, (laughs) called Mr. Magic because my business was called the magic rest. Now I'm just like putting my foot like farther in my mouth. But anyway, so I can remember him like encouraging me to get all these blog posts into one place and to make it into a book. And I decided that the name was going to be hot mess, not your typical DIY book. And on the inside, and on the outside cover was going to be a picture of Ava baby. And she was wearing a tutu and she had like a magic wand in one hand. And she was standing on top of the bar stools um, at our old house. She had taken the bar stools from the kitchen, like uh, kitchen counter, the bar area whatever counter area and Island, there's a better word. And then she had taken them into the living room and we had built forts. And, um, so the living room, you know, was real pretty in our old house. It had been photographed for many magazines and newspapers and things. And, but in, in this one picture I had of Ava, she had like destroyed the living room and she was standing on a bar stool from the kitchen in the middle of the living room in her tutu with her magic wand, looking like a hot mess. And I thought, and this is the cover of my book. So I went about the work of like copying and pasting all these blog posts for years and years and years into a book. Jason put me up in a hotel for a weekend so I can remember like editing it and all the things. And then I was like, and now what do I do? And the truth was I had no idea. I didn't have any idea what to do next. And so I did nothing. And I think I was hoping someone would discover me and that um, they would say, hey girl, do you want to do a book? And that I would be like, yo, I already got a book. Here it is. Like, it's pretty much done. Let's get this stinker to print. (laughs) That is not what happened. So it was right after that, that God really encouraged me to write an ebook of prayers for entrepreneurs. You can still find that today if you're interested in getting that. It's at jenniferallwood.com slash devotional. It's 10 bucks on Amazon, or you can go to that link and get it for free. But it was an ebook of prayers and it took me six months. Well, actually it took me about six days to write it. And then it took me six months to have the guts 
to actually put it up on Amazon for sale and even tell people about it. And I look back now and I think, oh my goodness, that was, I can't believe I was so scared. And yet at every stage there's fear, right? And so I want to encourage you today. I, I felt it then. I remember. I remember exactly what that feels like. So be encouraged. So fast forward to where we are today. The DIY book went nowhere. And the truth is it wasn't the right time, nor was it the right topic. And I was put in touch um, about two years ago with a book agent who really started to help me flush out, if you did write a book, what would the topic be? What would you actually want it to be on? And um, it took us a good at least 12 to 18 months to get that flushed out, to get a proposal written. Um, <laughs> and then it took another big chunk of time to actually go through the whole process. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Because some of you, you have a book in you. You're listening and you're like, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know if I want to go through this process. And I thought maybe just a peek behind the curtain would be both intriguing and also really helpful for you. So in terms of the three things that I wish that I knew before I got to where I am today. So where we're sitting today is my book, Fear is Not the Boss of You, um, is for sale on Amazon right now. It will not be shipped out until it comes out on April the 7th. Um, so we're in the pre-order stage. But what I wish that I knew from, you know, where I was four years ago with the hot mess book to where I am today are these things right here. Three points for you. So the first point is this. Gosh, I wish how I knew all of the different stages there would be to this process. Because in my head, you go sit in a hotel and you write out like, you know, your hot mess book and then you just sit and wait to become a New York Times bestseller. Like I just didn't know what I didn't know. And so now that I'm getting ready for this book to go out in the world, I can tell you some of the different phases there are, okay? So first there was the phase where I had to determine like, um, if we were going to self-publish or if I was going to go the route of traditional publishing. This is something you need to decide really early on. There are definite advantages to doing it either way. When you self-publish, you're fully in control and nobody's the boss of you and you can do anything you want to with that book. And a lot of people use their books as like lead generation, right? If you go the traditional way, but most people self-publishing, um, you don't usually see self-published books hit like the New York Times bestsellers and things. You just don't. So the other way is a very traditional publishing, which takes so much time. If you self-publish, you can do it so fast. It, you can have that stinker ready before you know it. In the traditional publishing way, it's 12 to 18 months before you can get a, get a book to print. And um, so there's just lots of different things to decide. So the first phase that you even have to figure out is like, which publishing route are you going to take? What is the end result that you have in mind? If your end result is that you're just wanting to get more people like, you know, towards your business or more people on your email list, or um, you want to have something to give away when you're at conferences, you want to use your book as like a business card, then a self-publishing route I think is really, really good. If you have different intentions um, and you are kind of veering more in the direction of a public figure and you're hoping to have multiple books and perhaps you'd like um, some television spots with it and all of those things, then a traditional publishing route, although much slower is probably the way that you need to go. So, um, so there's that whole phase. Then there's the whole phase of like determining what the book's going to be about and flushing that out. And by the way, our entire team was um, in Kansas City for the launch of Creators Roadmap last week, and we had a very long discussion on, is it flesh it out or flush it out? Flesh is your skin, flesh is the toilet. I still don't even know which it actually is, but I think I say flesh it out. So <laughs> you're going to have to use like um, f a fleshing out or fleshing out process to figure out what the book is even going to be about. That process is much harder than you think. Because I know that um, there were a million different things I felt like I could write about, but it really came down to like, well, figuring out which is the book that I want to be on a bookshelf forever. What is the thing that I actually feel like would be the most beneficial or a gift to people who read it? What is the thing I want to be remembered for? Who's my audience? Like determining all of that was way harder than I thought it would be. That was, that was days of being face to face with, um, the publishing agent that, uh, you know, I was with, but 
I didn't even realize that like that would be as hard as it was. So there's, you know, those things are really upfront. Then you get into this whole phase of like writing and um, the writing phase was an interesting phase for me. Uh, it was also much harder than I thought. And, and I thought to myself, I've been blogging for 12 years, the time I started my book. So I thought words will just flow from my mouth. I also thought at this point, I have been putting stuff on Facebook and Instagram, long posts for 10 years. I feel like I've got a lot of words. Ask my husband. He'll tell you, I've got a lot of words. But what we actually figured out is that there is a huge difference between writing an 1800 word blog post and a 65,000 word book. There is a huge difference between, um, you know, getting your tweet in 140 or whatever characters and writing a, a book. There's a lot of a difference. Like I have a tendency to write in a way that's like, wham, you know, it's like a quick build up, quick build up, wham, and then I back off. And in a book, it has to be totally different. It's more of like a gradual climb without that bam right up front. And so because I was used to writing in a different way, the writing process was actually very difficult for me. Um, hopefully Zondervan doesn't fire me for what I'm about to say, but I think that this will help somebody, honestly. <laughs> so I threw away the book three times over the course of the time that I was given to write the book. And I restarted the book from scratch with six days left to go before the book deadline. And every time I started over, I felt like I got a little closer, but I was like, but it's gross, but it's trash, but this isn't it. And I can tell you that when I, start over for the, when I started over for the fourth time, that book poured out of me like hot lava. That book, the book Fear is Not the Boss of Me, or the Fear is Not the Boss of You, came out of me like, it, like there was no stopping it. And so once I really got to like the angle the book's coming from and what exactly I'm writing, man, it came out like that. But I don't know if you guys remember seeing me down in a hotel, downtown Kansas City, um, and I was like using post-it notes on the window of the suite that I was in to really like lay the book out. That process was so much harder than I thought, you guys. You think to yourself, I've got an idea and I've got a team. And the team is really, really helpful. We're going to talk about that in a second, but it's still like a huge process. Then came the whole editing process. So, you know, you've got all this stuff that you do before the book and then you write the book. And then, and then, then I thought, dun, 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 my work here is done. Oh no, friend. <laughs> then comes the whole editing process, which is so in depth. I also found out, by the way, I really like this process. I really like it. But the editing process was kind of brutal. It was like, um, they give you like a physical hard copy and then you've got to do all this like red stuff on it and then you send it back to them. And then they bring you another copy with all the changes and then there's more changes and you got to send it back to them. And so there's a lot of going back and forth and the whole time everything's getting closer to what's actually going to go on the shelf. But the editing process was crazy. Um, it, was, it was way more intense than what I thought it would be. And it felt way scarier than I thought it would be. And we can talk about that with point number two. But um, the editing process was a whole thing, a whole stinking thing with lots of deadlines and all the things. And then now we're in the phase of promotion and marketing. And so I think that I had thought originally that when you write a book, you write a book, you know, you go the traditional route and you just, your job is to write a book and everybody else's jobs are to do all the other things. And that's really not the way it works in the traditional publishing world. And so I, one of the things I wish I'd known is all of that up front. Um, and that is not to scare anyone. That's just to let you know that it's much more than just writing the book. And, um, and if you're actually an author, you'll probably enjoy all of that. So point number two, things I wish I knew before I read a book. I wish I knew how absolutely vulnerable it would feel. Here's what I kept thinking as I was writing and as I was doing the edits and then as I was doing more edits and more edits is I kept thinking once this is in print, this is in print forever. Like, it's not like I can go back in two years and be like, Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. I want to change that one line where I kind of threw a family member under the bus <laughs> or ooh, 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 shucks. Um, I wish I would have said something a little bit different, you know, in the thank yous at the back of the book to my kids. Like it's forever. It's not like a Facebook post where you can pull it down if you realize you were a knucklehead. And so I think the like, um, 
just that deep conviction of needing to make sure, girlfriend, you better make sure this is spiritually on point and you better make sure you actually believe that you believe what you're writing in this book. And you better know when you're knower that this is where you're supposed to be saying like that felt really big to me which felt really vulnerable. And so I didn't know that up front. Like in my head, I'm like, yes, let's write a book. And I didn't know that I would spend weeks consumed with one paragraph of this book, trying to determine if to leave it in or take it out, leave it in or take it out, leave it in or take it out. By the way, we left it in. We just edited it way down. I had no idea it was gonna feel so vulnerable. May I recommend if you're gonna write a book, you just have a team of people around you that you can just toss back and forth ideas. One of the great things about going with traditional publishing is I had the most amazing team who were able to really talk me, you know, off the ledge on some things, talk me through some different paragraphs, kind of help me to see things from a per different perspective, um, help me to kind of determine is, is that accurate, Jen? Is that really how you want to say that? Um, how it could be perceived by the reader? All of those things. And I know that by the time we got to the end of the book being D-U-N done, like D-U-N, done, I was so proud of it because I worked so hard. Like, and, I, and I let myself go through all those stages of vulnerability um, of just feeling like, oh gosh, um, I am literally living out with this book process what the entire book is about, is still going ahead while you are just so scared, while you just like are sweating in all the places, while you are afraid of what people are going to think of you, when you are sure you're going to step on some toes, when you are absolutely, um, you know, trying to determine if all of this work is worth it on this side of heaven, like the vulnerability, believe me when I tell you, I had to walk that out through this entire book process but it was worth it. Point number three, things I didn't know before I wrote a book. I had no idea the number of people that would be involved in the book process. I had no idea like how many, like um, there's this person that's, you know, uh, responsible for that. There's this, like, you know, at first it was somebody writing my proposal and which by the way, some of these people are a lot of extra costs. So it was somebody to write my proposal it was um, a book editor. Um, it was having a book agent. It was Stella. That's a friendly. Yeah. Sorry, Zeke. The dogs see the UPS man and they're not happy. Girls. Girls. Sorry, Zeke. So. Um, so there was somebody to write my proposal. There was an editor that really helped me to um, make sure that it was as good as possible before we actually sent it in to the publishing company. Um, there's, of course, my book agent. There is a whole publicity team. There's a whole media team. There is a whole like launch team. There are so many different moving parts to the whole getting your book to a shelf near you process. It is wild to me, all the different like, um, you know, people that are involved in the process. And I didn't know that going into it. And so one of the things that I'm going to really recommend to you is if you are going to go the traditional route of publishing, make sure you are so happy with who you eventually go with and you're under contract with, because you're going to be knee deep in the process with these people for a hot moment and making sure that you really, really like the people that you're in knee deep with, I think is super duper important. So I hope that that's helpful for anybody who's ever considered writing a book. If you're like, you know, I've thought about it. I'm just not sure. I want you to know up front, it is so much work and it's also so stinking worth it. I want you to know right up front, it is so vulnerable feeling. And I think it's going to be so worth it. Um, I want you to know up front, there are so many different moving parts, so many things I didn't know, so many like people and um, expenses and tasks. And like, it, sometimes I think it's better that we don't know what we don't know. You know what I mean? Ignorance is bliss type of thing. But um, I do think it's so absolutely worth it. And so I would just love to know if you're somebody that has ever considered writing a book, I want you to share my podcast on Instagram and I want you to tag me on it.
And I want you to let me know what you thought maybe your book would be about, or tell me what your book title would be. But I would love to know some of those things that are hidden in your heart that you're really hoping will come to fruition one day. And sometimes I think just even saying the words are what starts the process. I do believe that for me, six or seven years ago when I was with that, um, my first business coach and we were talking about, you know, a goal, something I would like to have. When I said, I want to have a book, I think that's what really started the process, which took a lot of years, by the way, of me actually getting a book. And so April 7th will be here before we know it. If you haven't pre-ordered Fear is Not the Boss of You yet, you can go to jenniferallwood.com slash book. If you order two copies, please upload a receipt um, on that same page because then you get into like a bonus Facebook group and you get all the bonuses that come with that. And the reason, by the way, that we're asking people to order two is because it's completely a strategy. It's a strategy to get as many pre-orders as possible because it's based on pre-orders, whether or not this book will make things like Target, Walmart, um, you know, major bookstores like that. And so I would love if you would go pre-order the book. And then also we're in need of a launch team. And I didn't even really rehearse or practice or write down any words for what I'm about to say or what I'm supposed to say um, in terms of finding people to help us on the launch team. But we need a lot of people. And we need a lot of people who um, would be willing to post on social media about the book, who are willing to write a review, who are willing to read it early. And um, that's right, the dogs are barking for emphasis. <laughs> And it feels very vulnerable to come to you with an ask. Um, and some of you are already going, oh, yes, girl, sign me up for the launch team. Oh, my gosh, thank you so much. You can go to jenniferallwood.com slash launch team and sign up there. Um, I remember being on the launch team for Chip and Joanna Gaines years ago. And I remember how that feels. You, you get to see the book before the rest of the world. You also just get to feel like you're part of something that's, you know, making a difference. And some of you have been listening to my podcast for years. You've been following me on social for years. And maybe you're somebody that's new to me, but if you are somebody who really resonates with my message of mixing faith with business and of trying to live super intentionally on this side of heaven, the way I feel like God's asking me to, and the way God's asking us to as women in the year 2020, if my message of fear is not the boss of you, girl, you've absolutely got this. Um, God is cheering you on. You have a family who needs for you to show up for your life. Like if that whole message resonates with you, I would love for you to be on my launch team. Um, we're not going to ask a million things of you, but we are gonna, and going to ask you to pre-read. We're going to ask you to help promote. And um, I know you're busy. And I know there's some very, you know, great books out there. Um, this book's quite different than most that are on the shelves right now. And um, you know I stand for very traditional Christian values. And um, the book's Christian book. It's going to be something that women of any faith will not be offended by, but it's a Christian book. Make no bones about it. So if that's something that you would like to get on board with and help to promote, I'm going to ask you to go to jenniferallwood.com slash launch team and just know that it feels so vulnerable even asking that because I'm like, what if we get three people? Um, but my heart's desire is that we would just get a gang of people who start talking about the book as soon as it comes out in April. So friend, I just want you to know how honored I am to be able to be on this podcast with you every week and to have you share it and to have you talk about it and to have you show up in my DMs and tell me what it means to you. And um, it just, it keeps me going with my work every day. And so I just want you to know, I appreciate you. I thank you for it. I can't thank you enough for pre-ordering the book and helping us to promote. So um, as always, until next week, stay creative, my friends. Bye-bye. All right, we're going to do the YouTube intro and outro. Okay, you ready? Hey, friends, are you thinking about perhaps writing a book? Maybe for the first time, maybe for the second time. If you're someone who is at all considering writing a book, you are going to love this episode. I just recently wrote Fear is Not the Boss of You, 
which will be out in April of 2020. And um, I'm talking to you today about three things that I wish that I had known before I ever wrote a book. And I hope that this is a blessing to you. And I think you're going to get some great tips. So let's get started. And then the outro. Hang on. Hey friend, I hope that you enjoyed this episode today talking about three things I wish I would have known before I wrote a book. And perhaps you're not writing a book, but you know somebody who would like to. Would you do me a hot solid and just forward this video over to them? And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, why not? I'm here every week. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. I want to make sure that I'm giving you content every single week that's going to help you find freedom in your life and in your business. Thanks so much for being here. Dun dun dun! All done. All done. Dun dun dun.